us. And of course, that same shock we through the city that the Lord um, raised somebody from the dead. So there are a number of other people who come. Not to see Jesus in the first instance, but to see if it is true that Lazarus was raised from the dead. So we have two sets of people. The first set came because of curiosity. They want to see if it is true that Lazarus was raised from the dead. And if that is so, we realize that it is going to spread like wildfire. So the thing to do then is to kill Lazarus. Amen. Kill the miracles. Kill the evidence. So, when they came, they saw Lazarus sitting at the table with the Lord. And they could not deny that this account was true. Oh, praise the Lord. Because the evidence was there. But then, you see, sometimes we talk about miracles. And Lazarus is a um, representative of a miracle. And sometimes when we talk about miracles from the Lord and, uh, and in, we talk about the wedding of Peter, of Galilee, and the Bible says it's the first miracle that Jesus did. But what the Bible says to us is the first miracle that Jesus did that people saw. Get this? I want somebody to tell me today Anything at all that the God did, it was a miracle to me and you. From, from, from in the beginning, God created him and he heard that's a miracle. Then you can do it. And he heard it was a little form and void, and that was one of his, and God said, let there be light. That's a miracle. But we were not yet to see it. But in the wedding, when they turned water into wine, into water, we weren't there to see it. It's the first miracle that we really see with this, with our eyes. Yeah. But let's get back up here. So I'm saying to you that these people came not to see Jesus. So whenever you have a crowd of people, they have different reasons. So sometimes people come into church, they have different reasons why they come. Not necessarily to see Jesus. Some people come because they are sick and they need healing. If yeah. they get the healing, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people come because they are in a certain situation and they believe the church is able to help. If they get healed, that's it. Yeah. In other words, they come to see something beneficial, not only to see Jesus, but to see a miracle. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. And if they can see the miracle sometimes, they don't appreciate it. Yeah. But here we have some great people came up. And the Bible said they came to Philip and they said to Philip, Sir, we would see, in other words, we want to see Jesus. But the Bible said in verse 20, there, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship. They came up to worship. It's a different thing for your come to see the mirror. It's two different set of objectives. So they came up to worship at the feast. The same therefore, the same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and decided in saying, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sir, we want to see Jesus. We heard a lot of 
or about this Jesus. We may have read a lot about this Jesus, but we have never yet seen him. We talk to his disciples. We know that we are near to him, we talk to you, but still we are not satisfied until we see Jesus. So help me, sir, since you are his disciple, I know if I listen to you and if I put my request to you, will tell the Lord for us. Oh, praise the Lord. So they came to Philip and they, they asked Philip and Philip went to Andrew and then they went to Jesus and said, some people outside here want to see you. Today I'm asking the question, how many of us come today to see Jesus? The question is, what is our motive for coming here today? Is it to see a friend? Is it just because we are accustomed to come? So every Sunday morning we are programmed to come? Or is it that we come with a purpose? The Greek traveled from far and their objective was to worship. We have been worshiping by faith long time. But now because we made this effort to come up to Jerusalem, we are not just going to stay and worship by faith, but we want to move further to see him. And that's just something I want to tell you. Some people worship in God by faith. But when you worship God by faith, you're still at the primary level. Oh, praise the Lord. Because the Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you, when you start to worship God by faith in the substance of things all for, it is the evidence of things not seen. But at some time, you are going to pass over the substance. Oh, praise the Lord. At some time, you are going to know God for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between uh, worshiping God by faith and after you reach a certain level, you cross over to know him. The apostle Paul said, how oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. There is a difference between the person who is just there by faith and the person who know him. The psalmist said, know ye that the Lord he is God. Let me, let me tell you something, brethren. When you know something, is different from when you read about it. Yeah. There's something that happened in Jamaica that I live through. I know it. I see it. I understand it. There are some young people come and read about it, but I pass through it. Right. I know it. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. So the Greek brethren that came up they said, sir, we want to see Jesus. We want to see the one that is going to go on the cross. We want to see the one that is going to purchase our redemption. We want to see the God that come down and manifest in flesh. Yes, we hear a lot about him. We come to worship him. But we are not going to worship him from afar. We want to worship him near. We want to get close to him so that we can look somebody say, oh, that I may see him, to look upon his face, dear to sin forever, of his saving grace. I want to look upon him. I want to say, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Why am I the Lord? Do not pass me by. Somebody, every one of us who come 
We want to see Jesus. Anybody here today want to see Jesus? Anybody here blind? Bible says the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the dead shall be unstuck. Hallelujah! So if you are here today and you have not yet seen Jesus, you need to see Jesus. I said you need to see Jesus. Hallelujah! You need to jump out. Hallelujah! You need to shout. You need to get his attention. Jesus of Nazareth is passing. You need to see him when he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. People saw him. They came out and they lay. They closed along the way. Oh, praise and they break down three limbs. They put it for him because they had to see him. And the children shout, Hosanna! Hallelujah! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I am saying today, if you are blind and you have not seen Jesus, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are blind. You need to see Jesus. Hallelujah! You need to feel Jesus. You need to feel the joy of salvation. You need to get the gift of the Holy Ghost. You need to have the well of water springing up into everlasting life. So you would see Jesus and Jesus will tell you if you know who is talking to you, you would ask of him and he would give you the living water. The people of God need the living water. Hallelujah. Well, you must cry out to Jesus. Hallelujah. You must cry out to him because you need to see him. You need to get his attention. Jesus is passing your way right now. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Well, you must have a spirit of anticipation because Jesus said, uh, tell Cornelius to go down to Joppa for Peter. Hallelujah. And Peter will tell you what to do. And the Bible says when Peter comes, Peter starts to preach God. Uh, and the Bible says, why Peter yet speak? Why Peter yet speak? The Holy Ghost come. I'm saying to you, Holly, when the word is going forth, you must raise your feet. Hallelujah. You must trump the distance. Hallelujah. You must trump the distance. The people coming all the way from Greece, but they trump the distance. And when they reach up to a point, they say, ready now to see Jesus. They say, sir, we will see Jesus. Where are you today? Are you still down in Greece? Are you reaching Jerusalem? Are you tired? No time to tire now. Hallelujah. Because you made Jesus leave and you didn't see him. You are in serious trouble. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. The Hebrew is saying that we heard about the God that come. Hallelujah. In flesh. Hallelujah. God with us. We learn about Jesus that is God with us. Oh, praise him. We heard that Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Government shall be upon his shoulder, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We heard about that, but we are not satisfied. We want to see him. There's somebody today who want to see Jesus. Somebody had thirsty. If, if you hunger and thirst of the righteousness, you will see Jesus. Come on, somebody, raise up your faith. Stir up the gift that is within you because you need to see Jesus. It's a one time of fear. He's not coming back here for redemption. He's coming back for Shanda. He's coming back for the church of the living God. The pillar and ground of the truth. He's not coming back to shed blood again in Calvary. It's a one time occasion. Sir! We want to see Jesus. Do you want to see him today? The choice is here. God bless you.